His words hung in the air, thick and suffocating. I stood there, frozen, unable to comprehend what he had just said. Not the same anymore. What did that even mean? My mind was racing, trying to connect the dots, but nothing made sense. I had expected excuses, maybe a tearful confession about another woman, but not this. Not whatever this was. What do you mean you don't know what you are? I asked, my voice trembling, still trying to hold on to some sense of reality. I was desperately grasping for something that would bring this back into the realm of the familiar where I could wrap my head around what was happening. David's face twisted in frustration and helplessness. I don't know how to explain it, Sarah. It sounds crazy, even to me. He was pacing now, running his hands through his hair, looking like he was trapped in some nightmare he couldn't wake up from. I felt a chill crawl up my spine. He wasn't making sense. Nothing about this made sense. You're telling me you've changed? That you're not human anymore? He stopped pacing and turned to me, his eyes dark and full of an emotion I couldn't quite place. Fear, shame, desperation. I'm telling you, I don't know what I am, he said, his voice cracking. After that bite, I started feeling things. I started craving things. My heart pounded in my chest as I stepped back, my hands trembling. Craving things? What kind of things, David? He hesitated staring down at the floor like he couldn't bear to look at me. Blood. He finally whispered, the word barely audible, but hitting me like a sledgehammer. I crave blood. I recoiled instinctively, my mind spinning. Blood? He couldn't be serious. This wasn't real. This wasn't happening. What are you saying? I asked, my voice rising, a mix of disbelief and fear overtaking me. Are you telling me you're... What? Dracula? It felt ridiculous to say the words, but I couldn't stop myself. David didn't answer right away. He just stood there, looking defeated. That's what you're telling me. I pressed my anger rising again. You're telling me you're some kind of vampire now? Do you know how ridiculous that sounds, David? Just tell me the truth. I am telling you the truth. He yelled, his voice suddenly raw with emotion. I don't know what I am, okay? I don't know. His hands were shaking now, his old body tense. I've been trying to figure it out for months. I've seen doctors. I've seen experts. None of them can explain it. I've flown all over the world trying to get answers. I stood there, my breath shallow, my heart pounding. This wasn't the man I knew. This wasn't my David. And what did they say? I asked. My voice barely a whisper. They don't know what to call it. They said it resembles vampirism, but I don't fit all the criteria. I can still go out in the sun. I don't have the fangs, and I haven't. He trailed off, his voice thick with hesitation. Having what? I asked, afraid of what he might say next. He looked at me, his eyes full of sorrow. I haven't hurt anyone, but the urges, they're getting stronger. I felt like I was spinning, my mind unable to process what he was telling me. 
blood, cravings, a bite. It's going to be happening. Why didn't you tell me? I asked, my voice cracking as the weight of it all hit me. Why didn't you come to me instead of shutting me out? David's face softened, and for a moment, I saw the man I had married. Because I didn't want to scare you, he said, his voice barely above a whisper. I didn't want you to look at me the way you're looking at me right now. I blinked back tears, my heart breaking as I looked at him. I wanted to scream, to cry, to throw something at him again. But instead, I just stood there, staring at the man I thought I knew, now a stranger to me. He took a cautious step toward me, and I instinctively raised my hand, palm out, stopping him from coming any closer. Don't, I whispered, my voice shaking. Don't come closer. David stopped in his tracks, his expression pained, but he didn't move. Sarah, I would never hurt you. I would never hurt the kids. But how could I believe that? The man standing before me confessing to... What exactly? Some bizarre condition that no one could explain that made him crave human blood. It was like I was living in a nightmare I couldn't wake up from. I felt the room spinning again, the walls closing in. I had to sit down. My legs buckled and I sank into the nearest chair, covering my face with my hands, trying to hold back the sobs that were threatening to break through. This wasn't happening. This couldn't be real. It had to be a nightmare. But the sound of David's voice, desperate and full of regret, kept cutting through the fog in my mind. I didn't know how to tell you, Sarah. I didn't even believe in myself at first. I still don't understand it. I thought I could fix it before you found out, before it got worse. But I can't. I can't control it anymore. The weight of his words pressed down on me, suffocating. So you've been sneaking off to God knows where, meeting with people who supposedly know how to cure you? I asked bitterly, still not entirely able to grasp the insanity of it all. And what? David, how do you think this was going to end? I didn't know, he admitted, his voice hoarse. I just knew I couldn't keep hiding it from you. It's getting worse, Sarah. The cravings, the urges. I'm scared. For the first time, I saw the raw fear in his eyes. The fear that whatever was happening to him was beyond his control. The fear that he might actually be a danger. To me. To our kids. To himself. I wiped my tears, my throat tight, but I couldn't find the words to respond. All I could do was sit there, staring at the man who had once been my rock now crumbling before me. And I realized that this wasn't just about me. It wasn't just about the trust that had been shattered or the life we had built that was slowly falling apart. It was about him. What he had become. What he might become. And whether I could live with that. 